soul winning tip for today. I'm going to gear it towards Mormons, but it's basically going to be soul winning tips that you can apply towards any false, anyone who's steeped in a false religion. Um, you can use some of these tips a little bit, because basically, what you don't want to do is, you don't want to try to immediately go after their false doctrine. So if someone, if you go to someone at the door, and they kind of know a little bit about their religion, they're, you know, they're devout or whatever, they're, uh, you know, they, they like to typically go toward, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, go, well, what's the name of God? What's the name of God? Like, that means anything at all for the plan of salvation, you know, like, it doesn't mean, it doesn't have anything to do with it. So, my recommendation is just try to get off of that initially. See if they'll let you give them the gospel, because the gospel, I mean, the gospel is the same for everybody. It doesn't matter what religion you're in. The gospel doesn't change. You're going to be, everyone needs to hear the same thing, and they need to hear the Bible and believe the Bible in order to get saved. So, what I would try to do is to say, okay, yeah, well, we can talk about that in a minute, but let me just show you something real quick here in the Bible. Just kind of get into the plan of salvation, because ultimately, God's word is what saves. You know, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So you want to not just get into these philosophical debates or, or using logic in debates and stuff like that, especially right away. I'm not saying you can never do that, but like, try to get some scripture out there. Try to get in and say, well, hey, look at what the Bible says right here. Look what it says right here. And just try to explain that first, because that's where the power is. And, and just try to get as much of that out there. I mean, if they're not receptive and just don't want to talk, fine, you're out of there. But for the, because sometimes people do want to talk. And, and you can get you can get a lot of gospel out there to them, so try to focus on that initially. But that being said, you're going to have to deal with their issues eventually. So first, you want to start off trying to hit the you know trying to get to the good news. You know, get to as long as they understand, yeah, they're a sinner and you know they deserve hell. Again, I uh, with the JWs, I kind of pass over that. A little quickly, because I want to get to the to the gospel. I want to get to Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and that it's a free gift, and all you have to do to be saved is believe, and it's eternal life. But just because I might skip it over real quick early doesn't mean I'm not going back to it. If I think I'm making progress with somebody and they're starting to understand the gospel, I'm starting to get it. I will definitely. You have to. You have to go back because they need to be shown the. They have to believe the Bible to be saved, and. You know, whether it be a Mormon or Jehovah's Witness or whatever it is, whatever their key doctrine is, you go back and hit that stuff later on. Especially if you like, if you think you're making progress with it, you think you're, you're doing well. Now, with the Mormons specifically, because we have that's like 90% of what we get out here for the most part in this neighborhood is Mormons. They're gonna try to hit you with their work salvation, and they always go to the same places. So get familiar with those chapters and those verses. And don't be afraid of them. So, like James chapter two is their big is the big place that they always want to go. And then, um, you know, trying to justify that you need to have works plus faith in order to be saved. A lot of Christians, I think, are afraid of that chapter and afraid of those verses because they don't understand it. Now, I'm not going to go too much in depth on that because Pastor Harrison preached actually a great a great sermon this morning. It was hand in hand with what I'm what I'm trying to teach today of understanding James 2 and that the justified by works in James 2 is just talking about being justified before men, not justified in God's eyes. And there's plenty of scripture to back that up, and you can prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt. But make sure you know that. If you're going to come out and go soul winning, especially in areas where you know there's a heavy influence of Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons or Catholic or whatever whatever the, the, the major false religion is of that area, Try to make sure you're studied up on the Bible in those areas so you can, for one, provide an answer for them because they'll always come at you with, well, faith without works is dead. They always do. And if you don't have a good answer for that, that's not going to look at you. are not going to do a very good job of persuading them to believe the gospel if you don't even, you know, if you don't have answers for these things. Um, they also like to talk about, you know, have the, the modern, modern prophets are also preaching God's word and that God's word isn't complete, that there's still, God can continue to add more and more chapters to the Bible and things like that. Um, so make sure you have an answer for that too. It's a real simple one to, to deal with. But those are two things that they really focus on a lot of what, from my experience of dealing with, with Mormon time. And um, just to give you a few great verses, if you want to counter the work salvation bar, because that's the big thing. Even with the prophet stuff, I, I, that's kind of a rabbit trail. 
that's kind of steering you off what you're, what you're doing with soul winning and trying to give them the gospel. I usually don't spend much time on that at all. I try to just avoid that. But I usually have a quick answer and then move back to the gospel. Um, Romans chapter 11, verse 6 is one of my favorite verses here. Just distinguishing that it can't be by grace plus works. It's impossible for that. Because that's what they'll tell you. They'll say, oh, we believe completely that it's only by grace. And then they'll say, well, you have to have works. And they'll say both. And uh, usually I'll show up in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 first, which is, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's one very, very clear scripture stating that it's not of works. But then I take him to Romans 11, 6, which says, And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So it's either by works or it's by grace. You cannot blend the two and have them together. The Bible defines grace and work as being two completely separate things. You cannot merge the two and still have grace and works. As soon as you add works into grace, it's no longer grace. It's completely works. So that's a very good verse to, to keep, in, keep in your arsenal, keep in mind when you're dealing with Mormons because... If, and if they don't get something clear like that, I mean, like I said, you can use Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Romans 11. I mean, if they're, if they're just not getting that, they're, not, they're probably not going to get saved that day. You could just call it and, and, and move on. Uh, but this is for people, again, this is for people who are kind of listening to what you're saying. You know, they're, they're not, uh, they're at least receiving what you're saying. Even if they're not converting right then, they're, you know, you don't want to just be wasting your time. That kind of goes back to one of my other soul winning tips about just arguing. You don't want to just debate and argue and waste your time. But we're trying to, you know, if you need to convince them, if they can see these verses, you know. And let's say you convince them of this. And they say, okay, I, I see what you're saying. The, the last big thing I want to point out specifically for the Mormons, and you can apply this to JWs as well, is that they have to understand that Jesus Christ is God. You, have, you cannot believe on the wrong Jesus to get saved. You have to believe in Jesus Christ. You have to believe in Jesus who is God in the flesh. And a few verses for that, you go to John chapter 1, it says the Word was made flesh. You go to Hebrews 1.8, that says unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. And then in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, says that God was manifest in the flesh. God became a man. Those are three great verses that you can use to, uh, to make sure that you can at least show them that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. So keep these things in mind. You know, the work salvation, Jesus is God, they have to be dealt with. Now, I usually try to deal with that a little bit later because I want to get a lot of, a lot of, scripture, a lot of uh, scripture on the gospel out immediately. And hopefully that can kind of pierce through to their heart and get them in, in, into a state where they're going to be more receptive. Because if you just start combating their false doctrine right off the bat, then it's, they're going to go into defensive mode. And then they're not going to be as, as easy to receive the gospel. Now, a lot of them are really, really steep in their religion anyways, so it's really hard to get them to, to even talk and listen and understand. But, um, you know... I think if we follow some of these tactics and and, if, and ultimately having these scripture references that you know you're prepared when you go out to, to deal with whatever false religion it is, you know, they're, it's very useful to be able to just shut them down and have, be able to answer the, the few things that they're even able to bring up that, that are just big in their religion. So that's our tip for today. Try not to let that waste too much of your time though when you're at the door.